Hi and welcome to this video on the topic of science and technology in the context of the German Abitur exams. Let's go. Now what is going to be in this video? First of all I'll talk about what does it mean science and technology in this context of English of the German Abitur. Then what are the relation or what is the relation to utopia and dystopia this other topic that also plays a role. And then I'll focus on four different aspects or technologies that I think are very important at the center of this debate. This is AI or artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, virtual realities and cyborgs and robotics. There might be other aspects you could add, but I really think that this is the focus. Let's start. Well, before we do actually, remember it's about the language. We are not engineers studying artificial intelligence or uh, robotics. We are also not biologists who want to know everything about genetic engineering. We are looking at it from a language perspective. So you want to have the vocabulary to talk about these topics. You want to be able to write texts that have a clear structure that, for example, talk about advantages and disadvantages of these technologies. Always keep that in mind when we work with this topic in particular. What does it mean science and technology in this context? As I said before, it's not about the scientific details. It is more about other aspects that, you know, are connected to technology. What I mean is this. If we have a current technology that is really cutting edge or technology that is going to exist in the future that we see, you know, developing itself, the question is here for our topic, how is this relevant for the individual? How is this relevant for our entire society. There are different text types here we can work with. We can read uh, newspaper articles about this. We can read non-fictional books about this as the one I put up here, Homo Deus. But we can also work with uh, utopias and dystopias, so novels usually, but of course they can also be films. So very different text types we can work with. And the articles, the books, the dystopias, etc., they all have these central questions. Which new technologies are relevant in this context? What are the effects if they are applied on really a large scale for our society? And what are ethical implications we have to think about uh, if these technologies are applied? I said before, there's a large relation and a large overlap in this topic with the topic utopia and dystopia. I have made a separate video about utopia and dystopia that you can watch if you want to know more about that. I will not explain it again here, of course. Um, I just want to show you one of the slides that I have in this other presentation. And I'd like to point out for, the re for this topic what is relevant is that some dystopias really have technology at their center. Others don't. Here it's only about society. But some, for some of them, technology is important, say. From the, the novels you can see up there, 1984 is a novel where uh, it's very important that you have uh, cameras, microphones and screens, which were sort of new technology at the time uh, used on a mass scale. So sometimes technology is important and this is why many dystopias have a technology aspect in them and you can talk about many dystopias in context of the technology and science topic that we have here. This slide is also for my video on Utopia and Dystop and it just shows the role of technology, how technology plays a role. Technology can be the cause um, of a problem. It can also be a tool that it's for, for example, a government uses to stay in control, like in 1984. Or it can look like something that is a solution. This is, uh, for example, in Unwind, where uh, we can, as a solution to health problems, but it ends up, of course, being a dystopia still. So that much is, that's what I'd like to tell you about the relation to this other topic, utopia, dystopia, which you have to sort of keep in mind. Let me now talk about the, these uh, four different topics that I want to speak about. The first one is artificial intelligence. Of course, one of the, I think, most important ones currently. We all know about ChatGPT. Maybe you've done some of your homework using it. Um, and of course, artificial intelligence brings a lot of, a lot of worries with it that people have. 
there is, there is the worry that jobs will be taken away. And in this case, not like previously jobs for say in a factory, but jobs where uh, people that have studied, that have gone to college, these jobs can be replaced. They, some kind of a radiologist, so, so doctors could be replaced or lawyers. So a very different kind of replacement than the one that we have experienced in the past decades. Also, there's the issue of privacy and security. AI can sort through lots of data very quickly. Maybe you've also heard about the facial recognition software that China uses, and this is all made possible by AI. There are other eth ethical implications we should think about. It has been shown that um, artificial intelligence tends to be to have a bias depending on what set of data it has been trained on. So it could very well happen that an AI, say if it sorts through job applications, that it picks people and discriminates by gender or race and picks people accordingly for a job interview, say. So of course that would be a big problem. Also there's the issue of accountability. If an AI takes sort of the wrong decisions, who is the person we can blame for that, especially if these decisions are not only wrong, but really disastrous. Uh, think of the movie I, Robot, for example. If the, the, there's an artificial intelligence that turns against society, who is responsible and who could stop this AI from doing that? This leads to the next topic, lack of control. The more autonomous and complicated AI systems become, the more it's difficult to really control what is going on there. Um, I also really like the depiction in the film WALL-E by uh, Disney, where if you've seen the film, all of humanity are on this spaceship and it's controlled by an AI that seems to be very friendly and takes care of every aspect of their lives, but humans are no longer really in control. They don't know what this artificial um, intelligence is up to at all. And this also is an unintended consequence of the algorithm in the AI that was set up before. The next topic I'd like to talk about is genetic engineering. And this of course means modifying genes of people, uh, plants, animals, etc. to create a certain effect. There are ethical concerns of course. Some people would just say, well, that's playing God. We shouldn't interfere with this at all or it's against nature and we should leave this up to nature. We shouldn't interfere with nature. Another point is safety. So couldn't we end up, for example, harming a person by fiddling with their DNA? Um, and there could be other long-term effects, you know, over generations that we cannot foresee from the start. Also, and this is beautifully uh, displayed in the film Gattaca, if some people have access to create sort of designer babies, so to have children with certain traits that they can sort of select, then we would have the problem that only some people would be able to do that. And we have two classes of society, some normal people and some people who are superior and enhanced. And this would, of course, be a huge ethical problem. Also, then there's the impact on the environment that we cannot foresee. Nicely displayed in Jurassic Park, where people recreate dinosaurs uh, with the DNA and then uh, complications arise from that. But also think of uh, modifications in crops. So if you have corn and people modify the corn plant and then it's out there in the wild, things could happen that we, wouldn't have, uh, that we couldn't have foreseen before. Let's talk about the next aspect, virtual realities. This of course means you interact with people in a virtual space and you can see this um, virtual space through this uh, some kind of headset, or different devices of course. And here up there you can see I put a photo of uh, Mark Zuckerberg presenting the metaverse that Facebook uh, wants to uh, create. Um, of course, there's worry about a psychological impact. What happens to you if you spend a lot of time in this kind of environment? Will you get addicted to this? Will you be lonely? Will you have other mental issues that come up? Again, we have the issue of privacy and security. Who will have access to your data that you're going to be entering and creating? And also, there are people who create this virtual reality and others who just go into it. So the people creating it have a, a huge power and could manipulate people in a certain way. Think of also the film Matrix where people are sort of unaware of the fact that they live in a completely virtual reality and in the real world they are lying in these uh, water tanks. 
Also social isolation would be a problem if people spend even more time at home uh, on their devices and don't interact with people in the real world. Cyborgs and robotics. I think robotics and robots, this is clear what it means. Cyborgs is not also always clear. Cyborgs means that a human is enhanced by a machine or by a robotic aspect. This could be uh, that, for, say, your, your arm has been amputated and you have a replacement with a sort of a robotic arm. But it could also be that something has been added to you, so that you have an exoskeleton that helps you lift weights or that you have a chip implanted into your brain that feeds you um, information. And there are, of course, several worries that go along with this te uh, technological aspect. First of all, where's the boundary? What is human and what is machine? And where does one stop and the other start if we have a being that is combined? And if, for example, your, um, the robotic aspect of a human does something wrong, how can we separate it from the human being? Also with robotics always there's a worry about job replacement and this more of uh, of course in, uh, in jobs in a factory, you've seen this forever, but think of more advanced robots that take away the jobs of say cleaners or people working at the checkout in a supermarket. So these jobs could continue to be taken away by robots. It would create, create economic inequality. Some people would own the robots and the software, others would be losing their jobs. There are also security risks here, of course, if somebody hacks a robot or a cyborg equipment that you have, for example, the chip that you have implanted into your brain. There's also the fear that people will lose their personal drive, their agency to do things if all the difficult things are taken over by robots and people just sit back and relax. Also in the uh, Disney film WALL-E, the people who live on this spaceship, they are uh, very fat and out of shape and they don't do anything because everything is taken over by uh, robots. And this is also, of course, a worrying development. This was my video on the topic science and technology. I presented four key aspects to you. I hope it has become clear that here we do not want to be an engineer or a bi biologist and explain these things in detail. We want to talk about the consequences, the risks of these technologies and be able to explain them in a nice text, of course. If you are preparing for the Abitur, take a look around on my channel. There are many videos here that I think might help you. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Goodbye. English with Mr. B.